Now, you've spent the last several years mastering your MPC and standalone, but when you look at the MPC software on your desktop, it's almost like a foreign language. You have to relearn everything. The layout is different, the menus are in different places, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at the MPC software and directly compare it to the MPC and standalone, so when you start working on your computer in the MPC software, you're a little bit more comfortable. Now, before we jump into comparing the two, real quick to note that on the software version, instead of having to go up to the top here to go to the file, edit tools and view, we can actually go right over here to these three bars on the left and we have file, edit, tools, view and help. So you don't actually have to leave the full screen version. Everything on the toolbar is actually over here on the left. So starting in the standalone version right up here, we have our sequence. Now you'll notice on the upper left, it also says sequence right here, but we're missing a couple of items. On the software, what we have to do is we have to go to these three bars at the top of the sequence section in order to activate everything we see in standalone. So transpose, the start, the end, and the time signature. Now when we compare the two, we're gonna see that all the information from the standalone sequence section is also available here on the software sequence section. Then moving down to the center, we have the track section. Now, similar to the sequence section at the top, not all the information is actually displayed. So again, we have to go up to these three dots in the software, and we would want to check and activate all of these options, length, velocity, transpose, and mute and solo. Now we can see that everything we have available on the standalone under the track section actually corresponds to the track section on the software. Then moving down from that, we have the program. And if we look at these three, there is nothing actually here in the program that we can change. Now moving back to the standalone under sequence, track and program, we have the ability to rename and then also an edit menu. So let's take a look at sequence. We just click here to rename it. And on the software, what we do is we just double click on the actual name. However, go into our edit menu and then try and find that on the software, it's kind of hidden. So what we have to do is we have to go up to these three lines in the upper left corner and go to edit. And then under edit, we can see that we have sequence, track and program. So if we look at erase, clear, transpose, they're gonna be found in here. It's not in any sort of corresponding order. You just kind of have to find it on here. You'll also notice on the software side as well, there are a few extra options in the sub menu that aren't available on the standalone, such as bounce to new audio track. You would have to go into another menu on standalone to find that, but on the software, it is located here under the edit menu. Let's go back into our main screen on the standalone. And then if we go into the edit menu on the track, we can see all of the options here. And it's the same if we go back to the software and then go down to track. Here is all of the options that we have. Clear, explode, event double speed, event half speed, split events. But here you'll notice that it's actually missing a couple of options that are on the standalone, such as convert to progression. That's not located anywhere here. And we would have to go in to our tools and then find our convert to progression here. So as you can see, it doesn't correspond 100%. Then moving down to program, if we go into program, back into edit program, you'll see that the majority of things are here. Now, instead of having to go up to our edit menu here and finding the sequence track and program, we can find those with a right click, but there is a catch to it. So if we just go into the sequence section here on the software and right click, we're gonna see the menu actually generates right here. And if we go down to the program, it's not the full menu, but it's save, delete, bounce to sample, and bounce to new audio track. However, when we go up to track here and right click, it does not generate anything. So for the track menu, we have no other option but to go to edit, track, and then see everything we can do right here with the track. Now, if we go to the bottom of the standalone screen here, we have the ability to switch between our MIDI and our audio tracks. It's available just on the software. It's on the exact opposite side of the screen. So on the standalone, it's at the bottom and apparently it's at the top on the software. Now, if we take a look at the left of the screen, we have our different key views inside the MPC. We have 
our home screen, our grid, our track, our step sequencing, and our XY. Now, if we look at the software side, on the top, we have some of them located up here, such as our track. Then we have to go over to this drop down menu, and this is where we're going to see our step sequencer. There is no option for grid because grid is just the default right in the center of the screen here. And now the rest of the icons up here are essentially the same screens that you're going to find if you go into the main menu and then go into things such as your sample edit, your program edit, your pad mixer. They all correspond up here to those segments. And then if you don't see it, you can simply click on this drop down and you'll be able to find it right in here. Now back to the main screen at the top, you'll find most of those at the top of the software as well, such as time correction, the bars, the beats, the BPM, the tap tempo, your recording options and your transport buttons will be right here. And then the ever so important switching on your automation from read to write is going to be up here in the right hand corner. And then turning on and off the metronome is just going to be right over here, clicking that simply on and off. And again, one key thing inside of the software is you just hover over an icon, you are going to get a pop-up help menu, which allows you to see the shortcut key. So the metronome is just going to be shift M to turn that on and off. Now back on the main screen of the standalone version, if we click on our little eyeball and find our hidden menu right here, we would essentially just move to the bottom to find those same features. We have our inserts, we have our program, and this is for a specific pad, and it routes into this program right here. But if we click on the pad, then we see the pad going to the master output and then click on the track. We actually see the track and the program that is triggering that track. All right. I hope that helped. And if you want to support this channel, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, do all that technical stuff so we can keep giving you as much valuable information as possible to make sure you're an amazing producer. And on that note, you know the saying, thanks for your time, thanks for your attention, now go make something cool.